Okay? Sorry. All right. All right. Okay, so this guy here, the, the journalist from Rocky on Magazine, I guess has heard the, the new album, which is called uh, what? Three Snakes and One Charm. Three Snakes and One Charm. Okay, pardon my ignorance here. I've just been provided with the questions and unfortunately yeah, don't know, cool. know their information. Um, he is sort of half surprised that it's, again, just sort of a blues rock effort. He had been expecting a bit more diversity from you guys. Or how would you explain uh, uh, the, the style of this album and how it came about? Uh, I, you know, we just play what we play and um, it's you know, I, I imagine there, are, you know, music to us isn't fashionable or trendy, and our, our roots, um, our roots are in traditional American music, and that's what we experiment with. You know, that's mm -hmm. basically as easy as it is. Well, when did you come up with the material for for this for this record? Just uh, my brother and I write all the tunes. It's always just been that way, you know. I can remember in the past, you guys would kind of spend just a, a weekend or, or a couple of weeks on, on new material. How about this time around? Did you just sort of... Uh, well, I mean, we it, the, the, all the records are different time recording, but, you know, we're, we always write. And then usually when we when we work for a record, we'll sit down and, and uh, just go over uh, everyone's, you know, me and his ideas. And it's pretty natural prog you know, progression of, of events there. So, so you guys, but by the time you, you get together, you will have accumulated quite a bit of, uh, quite a few ideas. Sometimes, yeah. I mean, the, usually most of the things come out while we're on the road, you know, and then we just sort of, the things that stick with Rich stick with him, and then we usually end up writing, you know, new stuff. But uh, it's just a constantly uh, moving thing. How do they, the, the new ideas uh, come about on the road? I mean, aren't you guys just busy with the, 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 performing, the performance side and the, the, you know, being in transit all the time? Where, where well, I mean, you know, it's, <clears throat> we're not, we don't really look at it as maybe the way it looks on the outside. I mean, to us, it's every night we play a different set. Every night we can explore different color textures on, you know, what we're doing. So it's a learning experience as much as it is something that is a nice way to communicate with our audience and something that interests us you know so you know you get you get out of life what you put in and if we you know to us being musicians means there's <clears throat> always something to learn you know mm -hmm. so a lot of the new material will, will sort of uh originate from from jams on stage then no not uh, sometimes i mean it's not really cut and dry you know i mm -hmm. mean it's usually you know, Rich will write two or three things on the road, and then that adds to an idea when he gets home, you know. So it's a constant, it's always a, it's a constant process. Mm -hmm. Well, what are some of the highlights on, on, on this record? What are, you, what are you particularly proud of? Uh, I, <coughs> I, I like the whole thing, you know. Mm -hmm. We make, um, we don't really know about singles or anything. We just make, you know, albums and uh, mm. just, we don't really go in with any preconceived notion. We just sort of follow where the our vibe is and mm -hmm. and then you know whether it's eight days or or two months or three months you know you just sort of one day look around and go oh it's done you know so mm -hmm. it's there's not a lot of uh there's not a lot of uh anal you know we don't analyze <laughs> you know what we do yeah yeah but how does it say, say compared to the, to the other albums thus far i mean that might be also kind of a i mean it's the same it's the same thing every you know it's it's the two years of touring and living and growing and learning and mm -hmm. you know that that's what it is captures captures those two lives of, of progression those two years of well i mean you know yeah but we it's, it's thus far we've only really got to make a record once every couple of years so mm -hmm. you know every you know that's two years of living on the road and playing it with each other every night mm -hmm. and growing up with each other so mm -hmm. it's just going to reflect in our music you mentioned uh, your, your roots being in, in, in American, traditional American music a, a moment ago, and I, I can recall uh, you saying something once about uh, uh, your, your devotion to the blues in particular, and that uh, for one to, to really uh, give, uh, to, to do the blues properly, you have to sort of stick to it and not, not, not flit about in, in other genres. Um, well, I mean, if you're going to be a blues band, yeah, you know, if you're going to be a, just a blues player, uh -huh. It's a pretty strict thing, you know. Uh -huh. Discipline. 
What what is it about the blues that requires that? I mean, doesn't isn't there room for? Well, it's like anything else. I mean, rock and roll is a mutt. You mm -hmm. know, it's like a mix of everything. But if you're just going to play bluegrass, you just play bluegrass. You don't play, you know, jazz fusion. Uh -huh. You know, you don't get rock and roll out of it. You play strict bluegrass. You know, mm -hmm. that's folk music and. <clears throat> you know, as opposed to, you know, if to purists, any time you stray away from what's pure about the form, then it's then it's a bastardization of it. You know, mm -hmm. that's all that's all that is. Mm -hmm. And rock and roll is a bastardization of all those forms. So that's, you know, that's just that's just where we sit. So do you do you see yourselves as, as purists or, or more like uh, mutts or <laughs> bastard sons? Yeah, that's what I just said, you know, I mean, like, Which we don't play any pure form of music, we mm -hmm. play an amalgamation of all of those mm -hmm. things. There are other musicians out these days, like John Spencer Blues Explosion or Beck, who have been sort of taking, putting a new spin on, on the blues, as it were. Um, do, you, do you think that they desecrate the, uh, the, 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 the sacredness of, of, of the blues? No, I mean, I don't know. If, if they do, then we do, because we're not a blues band, you know, mm -hmm. I mean... Um, I, you know, some people make pop records, you know, and, you know, I don't really, it's not really, uh, I don't really listen to those bands. I don't really, you know, it doesn't really interest me. I don't really think about them either way. Mm-hmm. You know, do you follow what's going on in, in the music business very much, or are you... I follow what I like, you know. Mm -hmm. I follow bands that, I, you know, and uh, they don't, I don't, I don't necessarily look at music, you know, I don't, not really into fashion and mm -hmm. superficial trendy things mm -hmm. you know i don't really care what the next new hip thing is mm -hmm. you know i'm still into hank williams you know so <laughs> how, how about musicians of your generation who you who do you do you as, as say kindred spirits um well there's a lot of good bands i think sunvolt and wilco and curious to see what the jayhawks have done now that they've broken up and um Medesky, Martin and Wood, and God Street Wine. I think there's a lot of good bands around right now. Well, what do you think it is about those bands that, that, that attract you? What, what sort of element uh, do they have in common? Well, I don't really know about what they have in common. I mean, it's just I, I just like their music. Mm -hmm. As simple as that. Do, do you see yourself as a, um, a modern-day storyteller? Are you, are, you, are you singing about our, our times now? Is that is that a big part of your approach there to teach? Well, I don't write science fiction, you know, so I gotta <laughs> have some sort of vantage point. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't know. I, I I look at it as, um, I mean, whether it's the troubadour singer songwriter tradition or, you know, the quest for more musical knowledge. I, I just think we're part of a big tradition, and you know, you should be humble in that tradition and mm -hmm. realize that it's a lifelong journey. You know. And does, does that tradition uh, include, like, singing about oneself and one t one's times, or...? Uh, I don't know, you know, I don't... I mean, so much of what we do is for the listener to, to interpret, you know, so, I mean, I mean, I, I can sing... If I, even if I write a narrative, there's things in there about me, and, it, and I happen to live right now, so, I mean, I, I, I suppose it's some part of it, yeah, it, it is... You know, it's about today. I'm not writing historical novels or doing science fiction, so, mm -hmm. you know. The, the, the guy who made up the questions here seems to, to sense sort of a, an element of, of cynicism from, from what you sing about. He says, uh, you sing as if uh, being born in America was being, under, being born under a bad sign, <laughs> to quote his, his words. Um, is, is, is that uh, a common thread throughout uh, what you sing about, you think? Uh, I don't really look at it in political terms like that. I mean, every anywhere you're from, people there's there's you know there's power systems that are the elite. So you should you know what's the point of worrying about them? You know, I mean, I think anywhere you are, there's ignorant people who do ignorant things, and you know. So I mean, there's uh, I mean I don't think the United States is, is necessarily. I mean, it's just as evil as any other government. You know that that kills people to justify its means. You know. Mm -hmm. So you, but you, so you mean? You but I mean, I don't think. I mean, well, I don't really. I'm not really interested in. I mean, I can't free Mumia, and I'm. You know, I'm not. I'm not going to. You know, rally so that all of a sudden everyone who. You know, everyone who doesn't understand about the genocide of the native people really understands it and is sensitive about it. You know. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, most of us still just want to know why, you know, we hurt the people we love or whatever, you know. I mean, I think it transcends into political things. And, I mean, basically all the black crows are about duality, and that's the difference between a lie and the truth. You know, I mean, it's. It, I think it breaks down to more, you know, simple things, you know, yin and yang, light and dark, black and white. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so, so you, in other words, not, not taking a, a firm stance about something, but rather singing about both sides of it? Well, I think, it, you know, I may be standing on one side of it, but I think there's a dimension to what we do with within the music and the lyrics that is, open to a lot of different interpretations and at different times because you know you're not going to always see things from the same place you know that's that's why everyone is living this horizontal fall you know but you you think you you see more, more about personal politics than than than, than, than large well i mean I, I don't i don't really categorize it you know mm-hmm. you know so i i think if you sing about I mean, everything is a relationship, whether it's, you know, cultural or, or it's individual, but it's individuals that make up culture, so I think they're all tied in together at some point. Mm-hmm. But you're, you're... It's just, you know, having to keep it in some sort of language to communicate with people. Mm-hmm. But, but your, your perspective tends to be more micro than macro, I, I, I take it. Yeah, but I'm saying I think they both encompass each other, you mm-hmm. know. I don't, right. I don't, I don't think... You know, I don't think I'm going to stare at one patch of ground for hours and hours, but, mm-hmm. you know. The, I guess one reason the guy asked these questions here is because of, you know, the, the title of the last album, Amorica, um, there seemed to be some sort of message you were, you were, you were seeing about America. Yeah, not not really so much. I mean, it, that's an easy, you know, it's like this title. There, there's not really any, like, literate or, or, or not literate, it's, Oh man! God damn it. Padres just hit a home run on the Dodgers. <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, um, it, you know it's it's again it's more to, it's more like a the title of a poem or a frame around a picture. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's the sort of just the image and the language is just supposed to lend itself to the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And I and I and again I think it's so much more important to what kind of feeling or image it evokes the listener more than what I could, you know, sort of say it is. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I mean, there must be some sort of metaphorical meaning that you intend with that, and I think that's what this guy was trying to get at. Yeah, well, there could be, you know. <laughs> so I guess it's up, it's, it's, it's up to the, uh, the listener. Yeah. It's in the eye of the, eye of the beholder. Pretty much, but I can recall you talking about you know your your strong identity as as a southerner though. Does, is that a, did, does well, you... I wouldn't say it's a strong identity. I mean, it's like wherever you learn to to grow up, where you learn to walk and talk is a part of you. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is an identity, but I mean, part of the a southern identity is you know not not really having one, you know, because mm-hmm. it's not. <clears throat> It's you're you're always being punished still for 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 the South, you know. As if I had anything to do with those those things, you know. Um, so it's more more a backlash on your part when you talk about it's uh, it's more subtle than that, mm-hmm. you know. It's not things aren't you know it's not that intense. It's just subtle little things. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you know, like I said, you can't. I mean, for me personally, environment is 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 part of who you are and I, I grew up in that environment so I must be you know so, I mean part of being southern is, is or I am you know part of the south you know mm-hmm. in that sense and I, I can also I'm not really proud about it like I'm not a nationalistic person you know mm-hmm. I can also recall strong words on your part about about your feeling of affiliation with your generation about how you thought that people were making light uh, of uh, people of your, your age you thought that older, uh, older, older people were, were sort of uh, not not taking you seriously. Well, I mean, I think like anyone else, you know, people, most people is like, I don't really remember saying that, but I mean, I think to me, people are really selfish in their experiences. You know, it's like, oh, let me tell you about what I did it. You know, you, you could be, it could be anything. You say anything. I, I'm into bass fishing. Somebody will tell you, well, I've been bass, you know. You just can't enjoy it, you know, it's, and it's like, what if you were good at it, you mm-hmm. know? People think they own the rights to mm-hmm. their 
you know, like they're the only ones who smoked pot in the 60s and wanted to stop a war, you know. Like, uh, yeah, right, you know. <laughs> and Chris, how old are you now? I'm 29. 29, so, I mean, already you're, you know, age-wise, you know, you're, you're I guess you're older than a lot of your contemporaries now. Uh, <clears throat> well, they wouldn't be my contemporaries anymore. <laughs> <laughs> They would be they would be the, the generation behind our generation, you know. I mean, I don't look at it in competition or anything, you know. I mean, it's like it's the same thing. Where, I mean, it's it's pretty boring, but it's like you know, there's this band called the Black Crows, and we just do what we do, and we're really happy to do it. And some people really dig it, and some people don't. And it's really just as simple as that, I think. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. This guy was this another kind of one of these questions. It's a little bit tough to broach here, but he talks about like um, a band like Porno for Pyros. Uh, are, are you very familiar with their stuff? Uh, I know who they are. I don't really buy their records or anything. Oh, I see. We just he just sort of referred to them as maybe a pretty good example of of, of the kind of uh, band that that is brought about by a blues attitude. In other words, a, a, a real '90s blue at, at blues attitude might produce a band like Porno for Pyros. He says. Oh uh, yeah, I don't know. I I don't I don't I have no idea. Yeah, you okay. have to ask them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess what he means is that you know the, the blues often. Um, yeah, I mean I I don't. I, you can explain it to me, but I, it, you know whatever. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I think a lot of people see it as like you know. D d d the defense in the face of, of a society that, that's uncaring, and they see it as like a personal backlash to that society. That's why people sort of celebrate, celebrate their own depression, celebrate their own you know blue feeling with a music that's very uplifting. Yeah, I don't think that maybe he understands the real. I mean, part of the blues is also that some dudes didn't want to have a regular job. You know, <laughs> I mean that's part of it too. Uh, you know. <laughs> And I think there's a big difference between, you know, what you sing about coming from a rural southern background as a black person in the 40s and moving to the north and living in Chicago and mm -hmm. taking that country blues and plugging it into an electric guitar. Is, you know, um, personally, I think one is, one is a little more Andy Warhol and the other one's a little more part of na just as much a part of nature as, as the sun or the water or something you know? what about that old adage or the old cliche that you have to suffer to, 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 to play the blues uh, I don't know I guess that's what old cliches are for you know I mm -hmm. guess I mean I think everyone suffers at some, some point mm -hmm. I think anyone who goes around just smiling all the time being happy has probably had a lobotomy or something <laughs> I mean, but it's fine. We're all going to go through. Ba We're all going to be in love, and it's going to hurt. We're all going to have people lie to us, and it hurts. We're all going to have to make the decision whether we're going to tell the truth or tell a lie. Mm -hmm. and sometimes that hurts, you know. So I think people, for the most part, every you know, everyone gets depressed. It's mm -hmm. just some people want a free ride out of their depression. You know. Mm. You're, as you say, you, you guys are sort of carrying on a, a proud tradition. This this dedication to the blues. What is it? About well, we're not really into. We're not a blues band, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like yeah. we play. You know, our music is jazz and country music and folk music and R and B and gospel. You know, mm -hmm. so. What do you think? What What does your music have to be in order in order for it to um, in order for it to be real for you? Like, does that does that have to be honest? Does it have to be? Uh, um, I mean, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't really, it just is what it is, you know, we don't, if you sat around and go, we want to make honest music, mm -hmm. then you would be, con you'd be contrived, because you'd be thinking about what the fuck is honest, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it just is what it is onto itself, you know, and, I mean, <clears throat> I wish there was a snappier thing, you know, but it, it just, that's what it is, it's, it's just, it's just music, you mm -hmm. know. This, this, this is a question that's asked a lot here in Japan because we don't have much access to, to information about you guys from day to day. But, you know, you, you were originally known here as a band that sort of exploded onto the scene with this hot-selling album. And since that time, I mean, you, you've, you've maintained a very large fan base, but, but things have leveled out somewhat. What, what exactly is, is, is the state of the Black Crows right now? What, what, what sort of venues do you play? What sort of following do you have? Um... Uh, it's, I don't, it's, you know, 
it's we have our own community of people who mm-hmm. follow us around. You mm-hmm. know, I mean, we can. Some places we sometimes we play arenas, sometimes we play theaters, sometimes we play clubs. It mm-hmm. depends on what we want to do. We're pretty free. We don't really fit into the you know the regular sort of uh, framework of the industry. You know, mm-hmm. so I don't really. You know, I don't go over to the record office, and mm-hmm. I, I don't want to talk to my accountant too much. You know, <laughs> I know we when we play, usually lots of people show up, mm-hmm. and you know, it's so. I mean, it, our audience is really, um, really the the. I mean, they're the reason that we have anything. Mm-hmm. You know, they've carved a niche for us to explore. Mm-hmm. You know, our, our music and to. <clears throat> sort of set up on you know in town every once in a while and have them you know get in the doors and and lose themselves and have a connection for a couple of hours mm-hmm. you know? I think a lot of us who who haven't had a chance to to see you live recently or or ha- we haven't had a chance to to talk to people who do fall you tend to assume that you're the type of band like an Almond Brothers or a Grateful Dead who you know kind of attract the same people each and every time you come out there they they always make a point of seeing you though yeah, that's they you know, they um usually well cuz we do different show every night. They usually like um they want to come to as many shows as they can because they they know that there's something about it that is that makes them feel something, but those feelings are so different all the time depending on what kind of set we play and it, you know, it's 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 all of these it's all of these things that to us make make up what you know what our band is about as opposed to just getting up there and doing it because it's a job or you know just want to pretend like you're rock stars or something you know it, it, it transcends something other than just worship you know it uh it's a little more important than that so you, see you guys will get up on the stage not really knowing what's going to happen that night oh every night yeah because right. you don't know i mean we we have we sort of before the right before we go on we sort of figure out which tunes we want to do but we change you know we do different songs every night and then we always have you know I mean, and most of those songs change every night too because we do different you know we have different places in the songs and those places change where we you know can get off into our own thing real spontaneous Hmm. Are, there, are there any tunes that the, the people will demand each and every time? Do you know, certain tunes you have to play for every show? No. No, you you can change literally every time. Well, I mean, we can do whatever we want. <laughs> there's no rules to there's no rules to to you know uh, uh-huh. expressing yourself. Yeah. How how big is is your is your repertoire? Um. It's oh you know it's probably up to it's like 115 songs or something. Uh huh. With four albums and B-sides and unreleased songs and cover tunes, and mm-hmm. that's a lot of tunes. Mm-hmm. So over the past past year or so, what, what's been the most significant event for the band? I mean, it, has it been a show? Has it been uh, some personal? I think um, you know. I I guess it'll. I don't think we've seen it yet, or I don't know about what you know. Maybe the most boring times are the most significant. I don't. I'm gonna need another ten years to figure it out. Well, what about your, yourself, your personal life? Uh, has your personal life been as satisfactory as, say, your your your, your professional life? Yeah, I mean, it's but we don't, you know, our 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 personal lives, our music, you know, like mm-hmm. we don't. The band is me and my brother, and then we're, you know, all our wives and kids and dogs and cats and everything is part of our fa- our big family, you mm-hmm. know, and. But the family, you know, the family sort of exists around the music, mm-hmm. you know. So um, it's sort of like the fire, the campfire, you know. And mm-hmm. Everyone just, you know, gets warm by that. So mm-hmm. we're just into, you know, we just really want to keep just, you know, making good records and playing and learning and uh, just to sort of make it even more self-sufficient, you know, with between us and our audience. How much time on the road do you spend? We spend as much time as we can, as we can. You know, I mean. Um, what, what does that boil down to, Sam? Well, in the last six years, we've been out for five straight, probably. Probably had a year off mm-hmm. total in the last six years. You you thrive on touring; it doesn't burn you out. No, 
I'm a musician, and that's what I love to do, and you have to go on the road to do it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's like, I, I, there's, you know, as a creative person, you need your experiences. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, 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 that's what I learned from, and playing music every night is going to school every night. Mm. But you're, you're not on tour right now, right? Uh, we leave uh, this week. We're doing a month worth of dates here in the States. Mm-hmm. And then we come home for a while, and uh, then we go out in September, and we'll be out pretty much until the end of next year, 97. And when does the new album release stateside? Uh, it releases everywhere on the July 23rd. July 23rd. So you're going to be basically playing this album on this upcoming tour then? Uh, yeah, not. I mean, some of it, some nights, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Okay, and uh, how about uh, plans for coming to Japan? I'm sure. I'm sure it'll be in the new year, but I'm not. You know, we're, we're we still don't have like all of our plans. Thing we don't really go too far in advance. <laughs> we just sort of go with what's going on. Mm-hmm. So we're just sort of waiting to see what's going to happen. I guess you've been here like what two times before? Uh, I think just one time. Okay, just once. And then, but how do you, do you remember anything about it? Or is yeah, it, it was you know, cool. Uh huh. Do you remember like what where you played or? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, it was, you know, five years ago or something. <laughs> it's kind of, it must be kind of a blur when you think about all those shows you've done. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, we started a tour there. I remember, I remember we had a good time and everything, but. <laughs> okay. All right, Chris. Well, I think I got what I need to know. Cool. I, I thank you very much for your time, and I wish you guys the best of luck. All right, thank you. Okay. All right. Bye. our vibe is and mm-hmm. and then you know whether it's eight days or or two months or three months you know you just sort of one day look around and go oh it's done you know so mm-hmm. it's there's not a lot of uh there's not a lot of uh anal- you know we don't analyze <laughs> you know what we do yeah yeah but how does it say, say compared to the, to the other albums thus far i mean that might be also kind of a i mean it's the same it's the same thing every you know it's it's the Two years of touring and living and growing and learning and mm-hmm. you know that that's what it is. Captures captures those two lives of, of progression. Those two years. Well, of I mean, you know, yeah, but we it's, it's, thus far we've only really got to make a record once every couple of years. So mm-hmm. you know, every you know that's two years of living on the road and playing it with each other every night mm-hmm. and growing up. But most of the things come out while we're on the road, you know, and then we just sort of. The things that stick with Rich stick with him, and then we usually end up writing, you know, new stuff. But uh, it's just a constantly uh, moving thing. How do they, the, the new ideas uh, come about on the road? I mean, aren't you guys just busy with the the the, the, the performing the performance side and the, the you know being in transit all the time? Where, where well, I mean, you know, it's <clears throat> we're not we don't really look at it as maybe the way it looks on the outside. I mean, to us, it's. Every night we play a different set. Every night we can explore different color textures on you know what we're doing. So it's a learning experience as much as it is something that is a nice way to communicate with our audience and something that interests us. You know, so you know you get you get out of life what you put in. And if we you know to us being musicians means there's <coughs> always something to learn. You know, mm-hmm. so a lot of the new material will, will sort of uh, originate from, from jams on stage then? No, not uh, sometimes. I mean, it's not really cut and dry, you know. I mm-hmm. mean, it's usually, you know, Rich will write two or three things on the road and then that adds to an idea when he gets home, you know. So it's a constant, it's always a, it's a constant process. Mm-hmm. Well, what are some of the highlights on, on, on this record? What are, you, what are you particularly proud of? Uh, I, <coughs> I, I like the whole thing, you know. If mm-hmm. We make... Um, we don't really know about singles or anything. We just make, you know, albums and uh, mm. just we don't really go in with any preconceived notion. We just sort of follow where the American music and that's what we experiment with. You know, that's mm-hmm. basically as easy as it is. Well, when did you come up with the material for for this for this record? Just uh, my brother and I write all the tunes. It's always just been that way, you know. 
I can remember in the past you guys would kind of spend just a, a weekend or, or a couple of weeks on, on new material. How about this time around? Did you just sort of... Uh, well, I mean, we, it, the, the, all the records are different time recording, but, you know, we're, we always write. And then usually when we, when we work for a record, we'll sit down and, and uh, just go over uh, everyone's, you know, me and his ideas. And it's pretty natural prog you know, progression of, of events there. So, so you guys, but by the time you, you get together, you will have accumulated quite a bit of, uh, quite a few ideas. Sometimes, yeah. I mean, uh, usually... Okay. Sorry. All right. All right. Okay, so this guy you hear, the, the journalist from Rocky on Magazine, I guess, has heard the, the new album, which is called, uh, what? Three Snakes and One Charm. Three Snakes and One Charm. Okay, pardon my ignorance here. I've just been provided with the questions and unfortunately yeah, no, cool. no, no other information. Um, he... He's sort of half surprised that it's, again, just sort of a blues rock effort. He had been expecting a bit more diversity from you guys. Or how would you explain uh, uh, the, the style of this album, how it came about? Uh, I, you know, we just play what we play, and um, it's, you know, I, I imagine they're, you know, music to us isn't fashionable or trendy, and our, our roots... Um, our roots are in traditional 